Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Double hit. Solo two fish trip right there. That mutton snapper right there, baby. and widely used lures throughout the world. It's the one lure that I've always said, hey, if you have one thing and one thing only to choose that you can fish with for the rest of your life, this is what I choose. That's right. We're gonna go over how to troll the white bucktail jig. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, so like I said, we're going over how to troll the white bucktail jig. Most folks think of this as a typical jig, and that implies vertical jigging. More often than not, I'm using this in a horizontal position. I will toss it out and jig it in as fast as I can, or more often than not, I'm trolling this. I've caught more fish trolling white bucktail jigs throughout my life than I have any other lure. I've caught everything from tuna, bonita, big bull dolphin, and I've even caught sailfish with it. So if you're asking, you can troll a white bucktail jig, does it work? Yes, it does. The great thing about trolling a jig like this is, is it trolls straight, it doesn't spin in the water and give you this erratic motion which can be a detractant to fish and it creates great smoke and flare it hangs out right below the surface of the water level and it bobs up and down as you're trolling it a little bit giving it great action and simulation of a retreating prey fish all right so what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna go out on a boat we're gonna plop this bad boy in the water and start trolling it around we're gonna go over some of the most standard basics and tactics of top water trolling which is what you're gonna do with the white bucktail jig we're gonna show you how you can get into the bite with it we're also gonna make sure that you see not only how versatile it is but how powerful and resilient the lure is and the fact that it will get you into the bite almost immediately so here we go all right folks so today we've headed out of Boca Inlet pretty much straight out of the inlet it's right behind us just barely to the southeast we're about three and a half maybe four miles offshore right now sitting in right about 600 feet of water so the idea is today is that we are going to troll around white bucktail jigs three quarter ounce white bucktail jigs from the company Spro. What we're gonna troll it on is light spinning gear, snapper spinners. This is a Penn Spin Fisher 5500. And I've also got a Penn Battle 5000 that I'm gonna be trolling with. Both of these setups are spooled with really light mainline, 12 pound test. And then I've got about a 10 to 20 foot liter of 20 pound fluorocarbon on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pitch them in we're going to get up trolling. We're going to head east, head deep. We're going to do a little bit of blind trolling until hopefully we run into some forms of life or we find the fish. And then we'll know what depth they're at and then we can hone in on our tactic as the day goes along. But the object of today is just to, you know, have a little bit of fun, troll around some jigs, see if we can get into the bite and show you how versatile a white bucktail jig really can be. So we're going to start letting them out. The great thing about fishing with bucktail jigs is you don't have to let it out like a traditional conventional reel. You can literally cast it out and you're halfway out to where you need to be already. You let it out to your desired length and then you lock up your reel, set your drag, good to go. Pull some baits, have some fun. We got a little bit of a west wind so it's probably going to blow the fish offshore a little bit, but that's okay. So I set in your drag always a little bit you know of a field thing you don't want to have it so tight that the fish can't pull out line yet you don't want to have it so tight that it doesn't get a hook all right we're 
we're good to go there. So if you find lots of scattered weeds, you want to watch out and not let your lines out real far because you're going to be pulling them back in all the time. So we got our line out on our port. Trolling solo, trolling on a small boat. You always want to turn towards that line when you let out your second line. That way you don't tangle them. So I'm just going to make a slight kick to the port. Oh, and we're already on. We got a fish. <laughs> As I was getting ready to let out the second line. That's how quick it happens with those protein soldier. <laughs> That's how quick it happens. That's how effective this pro jig is. I didn't even get to let out my second line. We were hooked. We were trolling for all of less than 30 seconds. We're hooked up. Let's see what we got. You cannot beat this when trying to show how effective of a tool the white bucktail jig can be to get hooked up 30 seconds into trolling. Keeping the boat in slow forward. Again, we're using light tackle, so I can't really crank down on the drag. I don't want to get busted off. So this reel that I'm using has braid on it. My other reel that we'll let out once we get back up and trolling has monofilament on it. So when you're using braid, you've got to have a top shot on it. This particular setup has about a 50 foot top shot of 12 pound test monofilament on it. And that's hooked to my 10 to 20 feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon. You gotta have some shock absorbency, otherwise you'll just yank the hook right out of the fish's mouth when you get hooked up. Now you wanna keep going forward always when you're trolling and you've got that hook up because as soon as you hook the fish, it puts a bigger hole in their mouth than as if you were, you know, doing dead, uh, dead speed fish. And I feel some head shakes, indicative of some sort of tuna, I believe. We are at the leader. We're at the top shot, and yep, yeah, looks like a little black fin tuna. There we go. First fish of the day. Black fin tuna. Woo! All right. Black fin tuna. Fish in the boat, baby. All right, so that was some excitement right off the bat, 30 seconds into it. We're going to get right back to it. Pitch that line back out. So as I was saying before we got into the hookup, line out on the port. Turn to it slightly. Get your second jig. Pitch it out to the starboard. Let that one out as far as you want. You will not ever get tangled if you follow this methodology for letting lines out. They're spread out in a Y pattern. And then they will sort of come closer as you're trolling more straight. All right. All right, we're up and rolling, finally. Both rods in. Both lures being trolled. We got the Penn Spin Fisher 5500. That is out about 125 feet. We got the Penn Battle 5000. That's gonna be our short line. It's out about 100 feet or so. They're not really too staggered, too different in lengths let out. We got smaller baits. So we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna go back in to about 620, 615. Troll a little bit right back to where we came from. See if there's another tuna. All right, so we're up and back trolling. We circled around the same area. And we're gonna see if something hits, but we're gonna head more out east, head a little deeper. See if we can get into another sort of, maybe possibly different bite. But right now, like I said, we're doing some blind trolling, just like we did when we initially let out the lines. Some folks swear by blind trolling. They have nothing but the best of luck. Other people say, hey, you don't know what you're doing. You need to find forms of light. Me, I say whatever works for you, works for you. Go with it. It's fishing. Have a little bit of fun. Personally, I tend to gravitate towards forms of light, but I'm also always wanting to get out and have a line in the water. Otherwise, I'm not fishing. I can't catch fish if I don't got something in the water. So I want to talk about forms of light, like I just said. We're blind trolling, looking for forms of light. 
forms of life can actually literally be taken for what it sounds like. Forms of life, birds, bait hitting the top of the water, actually fish jumping out of the water that you head towards. Forms of life can also be a misnomer and a conceptual thing like weed patches, debris floating in the water, current breaks, temperature changes, when we speak of forms of life, we're consistently having to reinvent the wheel almost and go with what we perceive it as, which should be where life is harbored. The circle of life continues, where bigger fish come to feed on smaller fish that are feeding elsewhere. So don't let it confuse you when we say forms of life. It's more properly understood as where the life cycle of the ocean continues. So another thing to consider when you are trolling bucktail jigs, something like half ounce to one ounce bucktail jigs, you gotta control your speed. What happens is when you're trolling, the faster you go, the smaller the profile of your lure or jig or whatever you're using becomes. When I am trolling bucktail jigs, I tend to go between six and eight knots. Somewhere around there is optimal speed. We're trolling. You want fish to chase the jig down. You don't want them to come up and examine it and have the opportunity to turn away. It's an impulse bite. Trolling, if you read the definition of it on paper, is explained as the pursuit of fish that are actively hunting. We are not trying to catch fish that are at rest. We are trying to catch fish that are hungry, that are ready to get into the bite. All right, so that was some good old fashioned fishing fun. That immediate hookup, I didn't even get my second line out and we already got hit. And then we went over some great tips and tricks. Remember, this is not a giant lure. Like I was explaining to you, the faster you go, the smaller the profile gets. You're gonna wanna troll it at a minimum of six knots. Remember, what trolling is, the pursuit of hunting fish. So also, when I'm talking about versatility of this lure, you can go anywhere with it, literally. You can stay in the reef over 20 to 30 to 50 feet and catch things like mutton snapper on it. It's not impossible. You can take it to the deeper edge of the reef, 70 to 120. You will catch kingfish with it. You can take it past the edges of the reef and it will definitely get you into the bite with those pelagics like tuna and dolphin. Like I said, sailfish. Nothing better than hooking up on a sailfish on light tackle. So in your adventures of trolling with the white bucktail jig, do not be surprised if you get doubled up quite often with it. It happens. Doubled up on bonitas. Doubled up on the black fin tuna. Doubled up with kingfish. I mean, the possibilities are endless. These lures are high fish attractants. And I gotta stress, use light tackle. You don't need big, heavy gear. You're gonna wanna use light tackle like this. I promise you, it gives it better action as it's trolling. What this is, is this is my snapper spinner. It's a Penn Spin Fisher 5500. It's on a seven foot battalion rod in the 12 to 20 pound class. What this does is it's gonna give it flex so when the fish hits, it lets the shock absorbency of the pole and the monofilament that you're using set the hook. It'll stretch it, it'll retract, and that's what yanks the hook back into the fish's mouth. Now, you can use braid on your rod, of course. Just make sure you've got a long enough top shot, like a 50 foot top shot of 20 or 12 pound test so that it can stretch and set that hook. If you're not using any sort of monofilament leader and you've got braid, first, fish can see braid, so it is a detractant. Next, you've got no shock absorbency, so it could rip that hook right out of that fish's mouth and you'll have a short strike. Just remember, you don't need a setup like this. This is a Penn International 30. This is a beefy rod and a beefy reel made for pulling bigger lures and going after bigger fish. Not that the bucktail jig won't get you into those bigger fish, but the action you're gonna get trolling the little light lure from a big setup like this will not really be topical. All right, what I wanna do right now is I wanna take you and I wanna show you how to rig this up for trolling. It's all monofilament. There's no hardware. The only thing that is hardware related is your lure. We're doing line to line connections, 
threading our leader onto our main line and then using a simple knot to attach our lure. So let's get into this. Tie your spro jig onto your line. This is what you're gonna need. Obviously, you're gonna need your white bucktail jig, your six to seven feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, a cutting tool, and you're gonna need your main line, which is attached to your reel. The first thing we're gonna do on our main line attached to our fishing reel is we're going to tie a loop called a spider hitch. I take about 12 to 16 inches and I form a loop. I'm gonna pinch my line and leave about three inches of tag over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to form a loop. So I have the big end of the loop and then I have this loop that I just formed. Now, I'm going to take the free end of the loop and I'm going to wrap it around my index finger and this initial loop three times. One, two, three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the free end of this loop here and I'm going to send it back into that loop that I just made and pinched together. Then I will grab that and I will slowly pull it out, thus forming the knot called the spider hitch. Pull it slowly, pull on both ends, pull your main line against the loop, then you'll pull your tag end against the loop, and there you have it. That is a spider hitch loop. This knot, when it's done, your tag should lay flat against your main line. It should not be a perpendicular knot. If it's perpendicular, it is tied wrong and you need to start over. We are going to clip off our tag. All right, so now we've got our spider hitch tied, which is our loop and our main line. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to keep pressure on it so that we can attach our leader to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center of the loop by putting pressure on it with our leader, and then we're gonna attach our leader using a knot called a no-name knot. All right, so we've got pressure on our reel which is in our rod holder how we are going to attach our fluorocarbon leader to our spider hitch loop the way you find the center of the loop is you will take the tag end of your fluorocarbon and you're going to put it through your loop and you are going to just pull on it so when you're pulling on it, this point right here is the center of your loop. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to take about four to five inches of tag on your fluorocarbon leader. We're gonna pinch right at the center of that loop. Now we're gonna tie a no-name knot, which is essentially a reverse clinch knot. You're gonna go, instead of tying it against itself, doing loops around it and sending the line back through, the line creeps up against the main line. So we're gonna pull seven twists against the main line. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we are going to send a tag back through this little loop that's been created right here on our hand, where fingers are pinching the center of the loop and then we are going to cinch down on it as if we were tying a clinch knot. That is a no-name knot right there. This is a perpendicular finished knot, which you can see. If your knot, your tag is not hanging perpendicular off the knot, you've tied it wrong, you need to start over. Now you'll want to take your cutting tool and trim it off. This is a very strange not and it's a uh, it's very good it goes through your guides nice and smooth if you want to cast out now we're going to attach the lure which is our half ounce white bucktail jig 
we're going to, to attach that with a clinch knot. So we're going to put our leader through the eye of the lure right here. And then we're going to do a basic clinch knot. Now fluorocarbon can be abrasive, so I'm not going to do seven wraps. I'm only going to go with six on this. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to send our tag end back through that little pinched loop. Grab your lure by the head and cinch down on it. Remember, a clinch knot is a 90 degree perpendicular finish knot. If you don't have that nice perfect finish, retie it. You don't want lure failure. You'll lose your lure, you'll lose your fish. Not a good day. All right, so that is how you tie that lure. All right, and that is how you attach your leader to your main line using a spider hitch and a no-name knot and then you attach your lure with a basic clinch knot. It's a simple setup. Once you do it a couple of times it'll become second nature. It won't seem confusing at all. Alright and in closing just remember you're gonna troll that bad boy at least six knots. Don't be afraid to get out there and explore with it. These lures will find the fish for you. That's why they're so popular and used throughout the world. If you haven't got them yet, I most definitely suggest you do. You will not regret your investment. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned how to troll the white bucktail jig. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing. Going wherever the cool wind takes us.